everyone. Welcome to First Central Bible Church. We're happy you're here with us today. Um, we would ask that you uh, continue to be in prayer for the Gilberts. As most of you know, they arrived in Spain Friday morning for good. Well, for a few years anyway. So that is an answer to prayer, but we do ask that you pray for them as they continue to adjust. And they're going to a conference all this week and that they'll be able to make a lot of good contacts and um, as they start to serve God there. And also, as many of you know, Pastor Mark and Carol are still on vacation. Uh, I think they arrive home tomorrow. So today we have Robert Richards with us. He is the Ministry Engagement Officer at the Springfield Rescue Mission. That's an organization we've uh, supported for quite some time here as a church, and they are local. So we appreciate him being here today. And So, um, so I'm going to read from Psalm 29.2. It says, Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name, Worship the Lord in the splendor of his holiness. So we have that opportunity now as a church to worship God. You came from heaven to earth to show the way from the earth to the cross. My debt to pay from the cross.
like happenstance We're caught in every circumstance We're God when we fall and God when we stand We're God who holds us in your hand
your great love. We sing about how you are the holy one. You are the worthy one. That you are the lamb. We're so thankful that even though all have sinned and all have fallen short, that you love the world and you sent your lamb you sent Jesus to suffer and to die for us. We know that he came from heaven to earth, from the earth to the cross, from the cross to the grave, and from the grave to the sky. We know that he conquered sin and death, and by believing that he is salvation, by declaring that he is Lord, we can be made right with you. And we're so thankful for that, Lord. We're so thankful that for everything that you've given us. The big things like salvation, beyond our comprehension. The small little things that you give us every day. Lord, now we just open our hearts. We pray, Lord, soften our hearts. Help our hearts, eyes and ears to be open to what you have to say this morning. May your spirit speak in this place, into our hearts. Help us to see how we need to change, how we need to be more like Jesus, and help us to do that, Lord. We pray these things in Jesus' holy and precious name. Amen. You may be seated. Sorry. Thank you, brother. Good morning. How's everybody doing? I'm Robert Richards. Again, I'm from the Springfield Rescue Mission, and um, I have a lot of energy. That's how God made me. <laughs> so so uh, let's get to know one another. I, um, I've been at the Rescue Mission for seven years, and I've been, I was a, a chaplain, and uh, left chaplain, and now I'm doing ministry engagement. And what that means is I'm going to churches, I'm talking to camps, talking to kids, talking to the government, and I'm telling them about homelessness. I'm telling them how to reach them, not how the world does it, but how Jesus wants you to do it, right? If I'm going to say some, some stuff that you probably never heard before. Maybe you have, but I say it's, if you do not know Jesus, you can have all the clothes, all the food, you're homeless, right? It makes sense. You can have all the money, you can have a nice car, you can have all the stuff. But if you do not know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, faith alone, you're dying and you're going to hell. And that bothers me, and it should bother all of us, that Jesus came and he died on the cross for us. And that's what we're telling people on the streets, and our program, and our transitional living, that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. I'm excited about that. We need to be excited about that. And you know what? The whole world is coming here. A lot of people from all around the world. You ever hear of the 1040 window? They're coming here. I have three kids. I've been married for a while. <laughs> and then, uh, so I, my kids are playing on the playground, and they're playing from, uh, with people from all around the world. And I'm sitting there, I said, wow. People from Africa, from South America, you name it, they're here. Isn't that exciting? That is exciting. So, let me show you my testimony before we get into work, and we're going to have some fun. We're going, to have, we're going to call some people that are way back there. How you doing? Way back there, they come up here and hold sides and they make you all nervous and to be live on YouTube. We're going to go viral. We're, I'm being funny. Like, wow, that service is out of control. But so anyhow, I came to know Jesus when when I was 11 years old. I was living in Portland, Maine, a project kid, running the streets. Family was crazy, and then this organization that you guys probably know, Child Evangelism Fellowship. How many of you guys know Child Evangelism Fellowship? Raise your hand. Don't be shy. Don't be shy. Great organization. They, uh, we went to this camp called Camp Good News, and then I heard Bible stories all the time, but no application. If you keep on hearing Bible stories all over and over again, I'm like, well, that's cool that Jesus fed 
people or Jesus healed people or this, guess what happens? You've got to have application. Why did Jesus do this? Why did the disciples do this? And then when I was sitting in chapel, and I was one, and one of, they have Indian tribes in, uh, in uh, Camp Canoes of Maine. So they have Indian tribes. And I heard the gospel, and I said, wait, I'm a sinner. I run around the streets, and I do some bad stuff. If you, I mean, if you live in the projects, you do a lot of bad stuff. But uh, anyhow, I came to know Jesus, and, that, and uh, the Lord has never left me. He says, I will never leave you. The Lord is my helper. Do you believe that? Yes. He is my helper. And then God and his providence took me out of my home. It was a bad home. And brought me into a foster home. The gentleman that led me to the Lord, the state director of Child Evangelist Fellowship of Maine, brought me into his home, and I became a foster kid. And then I had one home. Usually, a lot of foster kids have like 40 different homes. I was very lucky. Brought me in there, and I learned what the family unit is. And I learned how to read and write, and it was, it was a struggle. You know, I mean, I really didn't know how to do stuff. And they helped me out. And short story, I went to Bible school, and then I went into the United States Navy. Any uh, veterans here? Thank you for your service. I have a friend, too. His name is John Rambo. Do you know him? That's my bad joke. <laughs> bad joke. I got, I got dry humor. But anyway, thank you for your service. And, you know, it's, uh, it's a pleasure to serve our country. I think everybody should serve their country. We got the greatest country in the world. And then uh, after the service, you know, join the, the, uh, the short story, the rescue mission. I've been there seven years. And, uh, and uh, ha ha helping people, building relationships with people on the streets, come in the program, and they can talk to people, and they can look at it face-to-face -face and say, you know what, there's this issue, and you know what we go to? The Word of God. Doesn't matter what else is, everybody else is saying, this is going to help you if you apply it. But here's counseling in a nutshell. If you don't want help, you're not going to get help. All right? And that's what we're going to be talking about. We're going to talk about the road of life. There's three roads that you can go down according to this passage that we're going to read in 1 John chapter 2, verse 15 through 17. So I think you're going to remember, because we got a lot of illustrations out here in the community, and i got some treats for you guys. You guys ready? We're going to get wild. Got a cart. Now this is pretty tame. We got, we got a cart. So I would go to camps, and, uh, and I would get a cart, and... During the mealtime, I would uh, dress up as a homeless person named Ski and then teach the kids what homeless is about. And then during missionary moments, later on in the day, I would say, this is what you do and you don't do with homeless people. So we have a cart, pretty tame, what you would see here, but this is what we're going to be learning is, why do people hold signs? What are they actually saying? And now we have fall coming, the leaves are falling down, right? People are mowing the lawn, right? So this is what it's in a nutshell. This heart right here. We all have it. It's our thoughts, our emotions, and our will, or choice, right? Thoughts, emotions, and our will. So everybody has a heart. And now the illustration about mowing the lawn, raking the leaves, you see what's in the, the surface. But the, what we're commanded to do through the Holy Spirit, what's in the soil, right? We can see the surface. Oh, the lawn looks good. The heart looks good. But you know what? The heart is deceitful, desperately wicked. Who can know it? But God's word says that he uses a hammer and his word's like a fire and he breaks it in pieces and he knows you better than you know yourself. Do you believe what the word of God says? That's what he says. So what we try to do at the Springfield Rescue Mission through the Holy Spirit, we got weeds in our heart that the Holy Spirit needs to extract it out. And then guess what you do? You take those weeds and you nail it to the cross. Because a lot of people are, you know what they're doing? Imaginary ball and chain, going like this over and over again. Ball and chain. For 20, 25 years, 30 years, ball and chain, walking around, doing the same thing. Why are you still struggling with this thing? Give it to Jesus. He will help you. The world won't help you. He will help you. So this is what we're saying is the heart. We're trying to See this? What you don't see, you're going to deal with all these things that we're going to be pulling out of this cart. Exciting, right? And at the end of the service, we're all going to have a pop quiz, right? 
All right, we're gonna we're gonna get we got some guinea pigs. All right, here we go. Everybody's gonna be hiding. Like, I see you way back there. We're gonna have five people. This is the Jesus high five, right? So we go. This is the remember. Like I do that with the kids. Do high fives. I'm not gonna drive the cameraman nuts because I'm all over the place. But anyway, Jesus high five, and and this is to help you to remember. You wanna do a high five? No, that's all right. I'm shy too. All right, so where are we located? Springfield Rescue Mission. This is, this, this is the easiest one of all five. What's that? No. Springfield. All right, who wants to come down to hold the first sign? The bravest one in the whole church. Way back then, we got somebody way up top. Give her a hand. <laughs> Praise God. And I'm going to have to need some water. All right. So this is all going to make sense. And um, so if you can stand right there, this is the first sign, the Jesus High Five. So where are we located? There we go. So hold it up so everybody can see it. Thank you. And so here, so we're in Springfield. Who wants to hold the next sign? Oh, man, we're quiet. I got all these deacons over here, like, pointing at their, come on down. So this is to show you what we do. Here we go. And then you go all the way, not too close, but so, yeah, right there. So everybody can see it. So what, what's... Yeah, on the second step right here. And then you come this way. So we go like, yeah, so that's what we're gonna do. So hold it up. So what what's this? So we got you know, we have we, we're in Springfield, but I'll let you know that we're we're expanding our footprints and we're going beyond Springfield, the metropolitan area, but we're up in Franklin County doing Operation Sunshine. What Operation Sunshine is our mobile feeding van. We go out and build relationships with people, we give hugs, we give socks and shoes and all stuff, and we get to know people. So up in Greenfield, there's Energy Park. There's the boiler room where they go. They get kicked out of the park. They go there and, then, you know, other places. And we're in Turner Falls. We're in Holyoke. So just to let you know that. So we got Springfield. All right. So what's the next one? Somebody come on down. We need a guy. Everybody's, you know, come on. Well, after you, we're going to get. All right, second, second ledge. Oh, so our foot's yeah, right here. One more here. Yep. And then what, what's this? Sandwich. So if you notice, we're going to have all S's, all this alliteration. <laughs> all right, sandwich. So we give, we give sandwiches and soup, and we're in Springfield and, and around the area. What's the, who, we got to get a guy out here. Come on down, give this guy a hand. We're in a youth conference. Uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. Oh. Right on the stand. Right on the... So, so everybody can see this, and then, you know, if you, if, the goal is for you to remember this. So, like, in two weeks, just remember this, because winter's coming to remember this. Okay, so we got Springfield... And then the last S, the most important S. Woo! You, you raise your hand. Come on up. Come on up. This is the most important one. There we go. Five S's. Come on. Right here. Right here. Yeah. All right. That's salvation, right? So, so that you can remember this. This is, is the goal. This is... We are a visual society. We have apps everywhere. People are holding signs. Homeless people are holding signs. And this is for you to remember what we do. Okay? So we're in Springfield, but it's much broader than that. Everywhere you go, you see homeless people. If you go out to Pittsfield, they're there. Go to Worcester, they're there. Go up to Fitchburg, they're there. You go down to Hartford, they're there. Okay? The Lord says, you always will have the poor with you. So again, let's do it again. Jesus high five. Springfield. Soup. Sin. So, salvation. Let's do that again. Springfield. 
soup, sandwich, soap, salvation. That is the Jesus high five. And just to add to this, stay right there. What happens when you go, nah, that's not important. We're just going to be in an area. We're going to give you some food, some sandwich, some soap. Have a nice day. Do you think that's effective? I can't hear you. Sometimes. Sometimes. It help the physical needs. It's sometimes. But you know what? You see a lot of the homeless hoarding. Get, 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 get. You can have everything and go to hell. And I just want to say, it's just, that is important. I grew up in the projects, and I just got get, 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 heard application stuff, messages, but I never heard the gospel until I went to Camp Good News, Child Evangelist Fellowship of Maine, and they told me the gospel. So I think God used that in my life to say, you know what? I'll build a bridge with you. I will love you. But you know what? This is the most important thing, the gospel. Because I tell you this, Jesus Christ is the neighborhood hope dealer. He is. Jesus Christ is the neighborhood hope dealer. Doesn't matter what you've done, he will forgive you. Well, Robert, you did this. I did this. I did this. I was so bad. I, I was in gang life and I shot up and all that stuff. And you know what I say to the homeless that come in our program or on the streets? There's only one hug that will get you to heaven. And they go, this guy is crazy. Right here. What is this? It's the cross. Doesn't matter what you've done, he will forgive you. Do I hear an amen? amen. That's what he will do to you. And then remember this. When we're out on the streets or in our program, this is what we do. We build relationships with people. Wherever circumstances are, because not everybody's the same person, and we love them. A lot of people want socks. We'll give them socks. We give them a nice, delicious meal, right? And then we share the gospel, and we build relationships with them. You know, we have the, the social media and stuff like that. This is the best social media. How you doing? How can I help you? How can I pray with you? This is my Savior, Jesus, and he can have a great relationship with you. So anyway, that is the Jesus High Five. Give him a hand, guys. And there will be a quiz at the end of the day. <laughs> All right. All right. So let's, let's open the Word of God right now. We're going to go to our, our main text, 1 John chapter 2, verse 15 through 17. 1 John chapter 2, verse 15 through 17. And this... This is our main text, and then we're going to be talking mainly two other passages after this. And then we're going to be talking about the road of life. There's different roads that people go on. So is everybody there? Almost. 1 John, chapter 2, verse 15 through 17. And then thank you for the, the, the gentlemen and the ladies that came up here. See, that, that's important. We need to see this stuff. All right. First John chapter 2, verse 15 through 17. So I'm going to start reading. It says, Do not love the world or the things in the world. If anybody loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world is passing away, and the lust of it. But he who does the will of God abides or lives forever. Let's pray. Let's pray. Our Father, Lord, we just thank you for the fun we can have. It is such a joy to know you and, and have a relationship with you and to, to laugh and, and to joke and to learn your word of God and then be serious. You know, the, the hour is urgent that people need to be loved, true love, like we sang today, and that people need to know that there is hope in Christ. The world is backwards. It doesn't make sense because it's full of pride and sin. And we have the answer. You are hope. You are love. And then you went to the cross. You died for us. We pray that as we leave here, that we would tell our neighbors, tell people 
that are on the streets or people that are addicted or whatever, whatever story they have, that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Pray that uh, we would uh, grow in our sanctification, that we would know that, uh, that uh, the Lord wants us to. You, Lord, you want us to just get into your word of God and to, to see what you have us to learn here in your word and to apply it to everything that we do, whether if we, uh, wherever we work, and, and, um, and then give you the glory. In your name, Lord, amen. So this, this is the road of life. They, if you're driving, and everybody, most people have license or you have a bike or something like that, a uh, bicycle, there's a lot of these in Massachusetts. What are these called? Rotaries. Everybody knows. It. And a lot of people do not know how to do our rotary. What are you doing? Go around and around. So the picture is our first, the road of life, the first picture is the rotary. A lot of the homeless and addicted do this, right? Around and around you go. See a lot of people that go, doesn't make sense. They, they, they sit on a bench, they drink, they shoot up, and they keep on going around and around. At one of I'll say this, if you go, if you hang out at a barber shop, do you think you're going to get a haircut eventually? You're going to get a nice high and tight, trim the ears up. So I say to the homeless, if you're going to be hanging out with bad influences, you're probably going to be shooting up. You're probably going to be drugging. You're probably going to be looking at pornography. You're probably going to be doing all this stuff. I say, don't do that. I see people that they overdose, they drop down, and their friend comes and picks their head up, and they're breathing. They're this close from heaven and hell. I don't know their relationship with God, but their head's right here. Their neighbor's holding their head. They pass out because they have heroin, and they're right there. The cops come, and they give them three Narcans to save their life. It's crazy. And then when they're saved, get out of this you know, they lose their, their hide. They're mad. But you know what? You could have died. It's like the rotary, round and around and around. How, ma- how much heroin do you need to be satisfied? How much? It doesn't satisfy you, right? You're, you're, you're going to using that stuff, and you're going to die. There's a gentleman, another gentleman that, and I'm not sharing names here, another gentleman, he wanted to stay outside, battle raccoons for food, battle rats for raccoons. These guys share stuff with me like this. And you know what? He lost his pinky, half his pinky, and all his toes. So he's pulling a cart just like this in the park, stubs, because he wanted to keep on drinking. And then around and around and around and around you go. And I shared Jesus with him. So you know what? That addiction is pretty bad. This doesn't make sense. Okay? So we see what, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. Do you think that works? How many times do you need to go around? See, people lose their job, lose their family, their kids are mad at them because they use up. You see, and I'm going to use this, prostitutes in the streets. Try to love them and tell them what Jesus is the way. So there, there, was, there was a prostitute. Now I say this. We, we got to know her. We have volunteers that come and, and do the street ministry. We knew when her birthday was. So you know what we did? Brought this huge cupcake out on the streets and put a candle in it. And you know what we did? We sang happy birthday to a prostitute on the street. Do you think that showed her love? Yeah. You matter. It doesn't matter what you do. I mean, sin is sin. We're all sinners. But this right here shows her love. And then she left that situation that she was in, and she went get help somewhere else. And I, and I, and I believe that she got help where she needed because we showed her love, and we helped her out. So I have some more signs, but, so be patient with me. So this is what a lot of people say when they hold signs. What's this word? This is, what they're, this is some of the stuff they're saying. When they're holding signs, man, I feel guilty. 
when I was, you know, a young kid and my mom and dad did this and I did this. And it's like that ball and chain over and over again. This is what they're saying. I feel guilty and I can't get over this. I, I just, ball and chain, like going like this. And it says, basically saying, I owe you. I feel guilty about this. But I can't let it go. And because I can't let it go, I'm going to go round and around and around on this rotary. And I can't give this up. And I'm going to feel guilty for 25, 30 years. And, just, and it's different for everybody. Do you think the Lord can help them for their guilt? They can, it says, I owe you. You know what? The things that happen when you're a kid, teenager, 20 years old, Jesus can heal you. You just have to let him do that. It's a choice, right? So here, here's one. There's a couple more. So I owe you. What's the next one? Jealousy. Oh, my. A lot of people are jealous. And they're, they're mad because they think that God, you owe me. I don't like this. I, I deserve this because I'm important, right? This is what they're saying when they hold signs. I'm jealous. God, I'm so mad at you because I had great potential. I could have done this. I could have done that. But you know what? I'm going to hold on to that jealousy, and I'm not going to give it up, and it's going to cause me to be addicted, and I'm going to basically fall apart. Do you think God can help somebody that's jealous? So this is what they're saying. When you see signs, they're saying these things. You might not see it, but God sees it. Just like when I say, like, mowing the lawn, God sees what's in the soil of a man's heart. And then we need, the Holy Spirit needs to take these weeds, extract them out of the heart with a person's choice, and nail it to the cross. And you can have hope. Because he is the neighborhood hope dealer. So there's, there's another one. We've got a couple more. What's this one? Greed. I owe me. I'm the most important person in the world. Right? This is what they say. Give me more. Give me more. None for you. None for you. For me. For me. I want all the stuff. I want all the socks. I want all the shoes. You think it works? How much stuff do you need to be satisfied? Really? More, more, more? God says no. No. He says be a servant. Right? So this is greed. I owe me. This is what you see. And then the last sign that I have up for this section. Sinful anger. You might see this on when you got when you come in the church, people drive, get out of my way. Get out of my way. I own the road. A lot of people are angry. I mean, I think there's a lot of anger in the society, right? You owe me. I'm the most important. And this is what you see with the homeless, the addicted. They're angry, and they can't get beyond it. They struggle, and guess what happens? It causes more problems. The rotary. Around and around and around you go, but you don't have victory. This is what they're saying. Okay, next passage. Let's go to Genesis chapter 3. Genesis chapter 3, where it all started. So Genesis chapter 3. says, now the serpent was more cunning than any of the beasts of the field, which the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, has God indeed said you shall not eat of every tree of the garden? So just pay attention to that. You have the serpent, Lucifer, talking about what God has said. And you know what he's doing? He's lying. He's twisting scripture, or twisting what God says. And the woman said to the serpent, we may eat of the fruit of the tree of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst 
of the garden, God has said, you should not eat it, nor shall you touch it, lest you die. Then the serpent said to the woman, you shall not surely die. Say, another lie. For God knows that in that day you eat of it, your eyes will be opened, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. So he's, he's lying. He's not telling what God actually said. And then here we go. Lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, and pride of life. What we just talked about in 1 John chapter 2, okay? So here we go. What did Eve do? So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was pleasant to the eyes and the tree desirable to make one wise, she took of its fruit and did what? Ate the fruit. She also gave to her husband with her, and he ate. Then the eyes of both of them were open, and they knew they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves coverings. Lust of the, uh, the eyes, pride of life, the flesh, looking at all this stuff, and they gave in. They didn't listen to God. And the enemy tricked them, and this is what happened. And like I said, right here, another, another sign. If you look at sin, what's the middle of sin? I. And then the devil. I. Pride. The devil wanted to distort God's creation. If you have pride, the middle of that is I and sin. But God had another plan. He surely did. He had another plan. And God is all about relationships. And it says in verse 8, it says, And they heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day, and Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees in the garden. And then, to just for the sake of time, he had a discord. You know, he had a conversation with everybody that was involved in this story. And they all blame shift, all pointing fingers at other people. But then, you know what God says? I understand that you sinned. I understand you did something wrong. But Adam and Eve, not Lucifer, Adam and Eve, I'm going to correct this. And I'm going to show you the right way how to deal with this. To deal with the lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. The world, the rotary, does not work. And if God, the Lord Jesus, didn't step in, we'd be all going to hell. But he stepped in. And he said, I'm going to fix this. So let's look at Matthew chapter 4. Matthew chapter 4. Eve was there. She talked to the serpent. Adam was there too and said nothing. Not good, right? So Jesus, in Matthew chapter 4, he had no food. For how long? And then the devil came. I mean, how long would it, would it last for? I mean, two days. Give me a cheeseburger. Give me some fries. I mean, you know, like, you know, we want food. But the Lord showed us, he's going to show us how to do this. Not to trust in the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. So Matthew chapter 4 it says, Then Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights after he was hungry, now when the tempter came to him, he said, If you are the Son of God, command that these stones become bread. You know, like I said, what's the middle of uh, pride? I. And what's the middle of sin? I. So you see the Lucifer basically putting himself here and then God the Lord Jesus, all man, all God at the same time, trying to tempt the Lord. And he's like, I'm more important than you. You can do this. And you know what the Lord says? He's going to quote from the book of Deuteronomy, not once, not twice, three times. It says, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. And it's cross-reference, Deuteronomy 8.3. So that's the first one. So what did... So this is what you're going to do. Adam and Eve didn't 
put God in the equation. They didn't use God's word, right? So what's the Lord Jesus do? God the Lord Jesus. He's using God's word, quoting to battle the enemy. We're in a spiritual war, and you got to use scripture. And he uses Deuteronomy right here. Verse 5 says, Then the devil took him up into the holy city, set him into the pinnacles of the temple, and said to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down, for it is written, He shall give his angels charge over you, and in their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against the stone. Again, pride. And then Jesus said to him, It is written. It is written. He uses God's word. It is written. You shall not tempt the Lord your God. Cross-reference Deuteronomy 6, 16. Again, the devil took him up an exceedingly high mountain and showed him the kingdoms of the world and their glory. And he said to him, all these things I give you, you, sh- you if you will fall down and worship me. Again, pride, sin. You were created, Lucifer. But you chose to do things your own way. You are the father of lies, the father of pride. Then Jesus said to him, Away with you, Satan. For it is written, once again, the third time, You shall worship the Lord your God, and him only you shall serve. Cross-reference Deuteronomy 6.13. Then the devil left him. Do you think if Adam and Eve would have trusted not in their eyes, not in the, the, themselves, that, and they used God's word and said, hey, I have a relationship with God. I walk in the garden with him. He created me. He, do you think Lucifer would have left? Then the devil left him, and behold, angels came and ministered to him. Do we have any, we have in, any English professors or, or um Teachers or anybody that loves English? No? I'm still learning English. If you can master the semicolon, you are good. Right? But this, this, this is going to wrap this up. This is what the world says, the, the rotary, right? This is what they're saying. This is how they're spelling love. We sang about it. This is how, what they're spelling. It's upside down. It doesn't work. It looks, it messes your mind up like, what the heck? This is what they're saying out there. This is what they're saying when they don't follow God, they don't use scripture, and they try to do it their own way. It's upside down. That's what happened in the Garden of Eden. It doesn't work. And then Jesus says, you know what? You use scripture. And you fight the enemy. And you know what else he said? And I remembered I'd bring one. I got... Try to get in here. Red Sharpie. He's like, uh-oh, what are you going to do? So Jesus said, I'm going to fix this. I love you so much. I showed it in here. I'm going to fix it. I'm going to show what love's really about. See this? Upside down? I'm going to fix this thing. See what it says? Where the world is backwards. I love you so much. The right way is my way. You did it wrong, I will do it right. Doesn't matter what you've done, I will forgive you. Because I love you so much. I died on the cross for you. I shed my blood. Without the shed of blood, there's no forgiveness of sins. And he shed his blood for you and people on the streets, people that are addicted, and people that are so proud and say, I have no issues, I'm perfect. You're a liar. Because the Bible says, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. You know what he said? The world's backwards. That rotary, around and around you go. But I will fix this. And you know what this is called? The crosswalk. Follow Jesus. He shed his blood for you. For people that are struggling out there. They want to hold on to their jealousy. They want to hold on to their guilt. They want to hold on to their greed. They want to hold on to their sinful anger. It doesn't work. They want to look at stuff on the internet that doesn't work. It never satisfies you. You know what satisfies you? Hope in Jesus Christ. And that's what we said. This works. And then some people, they struggle, and they go back. And then, and, and, uh, boom. Let me put it right here. 
That's true love. This is what God says when, he, when we read his word and we apply it and we share with people. I love you. What? I love you. I love you. I love you. What? I love you. I love you. That's what he keeps on saying. Read my word. Get to know me. Grow in your walk with the Lord. I love you. He wants us to be in his word. And we want us to apply his word so we can share it to people that are outside and inside and that we can grow. Make sense? So Jesus says, follow the crosswalk. And then when you're on the crosswalk and you know me, don't jaywalk. Don't go back. Follow me. Grow. And know me, right? At the Springfield Rescue Mission, we have many opportunities where you can get involved. We, we, you can come and help cook a meal. And you can love people. And get to know people that come into our, to our facilities. We have permits at our Mill Street location where our program is for 60 beds. We have permits at our Taylor Street emergency shelter. And then upstairs is the transitional living for 60 beds. We, our director, after over 30 years, retired, Mr. Willoughby. And now we have a new director, Mr. Kevin Ramsdale and his wife, Saber. Come and meet them. Come and, come and get involved. Come and make a meal. We, have, we serve breakfast every day but Sunday for guests that come in, and, we, and now we're doing lunch, trying to build relationships with people, have people show them that Jesus is the way, the truth, and light. We have Operation Sunshine, mobile feeding van. We, we are in Springfield helping people out. We're going into some rough areas. But I tell you, if, you never, if you're afraid to reach them, you're never going to reach them. Right? you got to go. Go into all the world and preach the gospel. That means Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and everywhere, right? So come and come volunteer. Serve, share. Everybody has a testimony. Maybe you feel pulled to go up to Greenfield and Holyoke and Turner Falls and share the gospel there. And there's other things, too. We have major meals coming up. We have what's, what's the next big holiday after no November? Thanksgiving, so we have a Thanksgiving meal. Christmas, and we have Easter. So get involved, build relationships. It's all about relationships, right? All about relationships. So, so these are some things that you could do at the Springfield Rescue Mission. There's many more, and then pray for us as, as we build relationships with you. And then this is, I know there's a lot here, but that's what the Lord wants us to know. When you see a homeless person, there's a lot more there. We've got to share the real love. It's all upside down. We've got to show them what God intended. True love is this, right? True love. And then we can have people, see all these signs here, you know, people, when they have true love, you can say, you know what? I'm going to lay that at the cross. I'm going to lay that at the cross. Lay that at the cross. I'm going to lay that at the cross. And I'm going to have victory. We've had people that come in our program that have gotten help. They go to their church and they become a deacon or an elder. Later in life, they get on one knee and they ask this beautiful lady to marry them. And great story, right? That's what it's all about. Building into relationships with people and having them get help. Will you pray for us? Will you you know, prayfully come and, come and see what we're doing? Come and see what we're doing. Get a tour and get involved. So let's pray. And then, uh, and then uh, at the end here, I have some literature if you want, you know, to take, if you want to take, some cards, uh, compassion cards we can hand out to the homeless. And then if you have any questions, I'm here to talk, and uh, I'd like to get to know you. Okay? Let's pray. Father, Lord, we just uh, thank you for this message. There's a lot to take in, Lord. And, and uh, that rotary, the... The world, it doesn't work. And a lot of people try to do that, and it, it uh, leads to heartache, it leads to frustration. But you tell us that through your word that you love us so much, and that you died on the cross for us, and that you rose up from the grave, and you have victory over sin and death. We just thank you for your word, that no matter what problem we go through, you can help us. And we pray that the world, homeless, addicted, people that struggle, we all struggle, that they would find that, 
and we will use your word, and that you would use us as a vessel for your kingdom. We thank you for the opportunity to, to open up your word, to apply it, and we pray as we leave here that uh, we would uh, go and be missionaries for you wherever you send us, whether it's our job, at the library, at um, Walmart, Big Y, wherever it is, that uh, we can share the hope that is in us to the world. We love you. We praise you. In your name, Lord, amen. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity. They'll, they'll, there'll be a quiz on all the Jesus high five.